cortical unstable. It is not because the operating system itself is problematic. It, some, a lot of times it has to do with the software drivers that vendors supply um, when you purchase new hardware. Because Microsoft, you know, as a, a publisher, cannot control and say, you know, oh, okay, AMD and NVIDIA, you guys have to shape up and you know, make sure that your driver software does not crash, right? Because, you know, the, that software is developed outside of Microsoft and not within Microsoft. Do we, are we doing okay so far with these concepts? Why outside and not within? Well, because Microsoft is a company, <laughs> NVIDIA is a separate company. In fact, a lot of times, you know, the software driver of NVIDIA it, it is proprietary. They don't even want Microsoft to understand how their hardware work. Okay, so Microsoft, you know, really doesn't care either. You know, Microsoft just says, okay, when I want you to do something, this is the form that I will give you. As long as you do that, you know, with this form, you know, and do it efficiently, I don't care what you do on the other side. But the problem is, you know, when you are dealing with NVIDIA or AT, uh, AMD, those are re relatively big companies and they have you know, big you know, development, you know, development you know, teams. But when you deal with smaller companies like Realtek, you know, which makes a lot of the networking chipsets or some of the uh, USB thumb drive you know, chipsets, those are much smaller companies. And a lot of times they don't have as much resources to make sure that their driver is fully functional and bugless before they publish it. But because the driver is working so closely with the operating system, it can actually access memory that belongs to the operating system itself. So when the software driver has a bug, it corrupts memory that belongs to the operating system. That will cause the operating system to crash and take everything with it. And this is why you see the blue screen of death, or sometimes you see the blue screen of death because of this reason. Yep. Uh, when you say the software driver corrupts the operating system, Mm -hmm. That means that it happens when you software driver overrides some command of the operating system. It overrides the, um, the security system. It, it just has to alter the memory that your operating, si operating system uses enough to cause it to crash. Yeah, because uh, it happens with my own computer. You got a blue screen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what I need is I broke it can be some other reasons too. You know, it can all it can it can go all the way down to the hardware component. You know, failing itself. You know, that can also cause a blue screen of that. Yep. Now, Microsoft or don't they generally include some sort of generic drivers for generic video? Generic they try to include as much as they can. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the printers, you know, that come. If you look at Windows and you know, just make sure that it doesn't hook up to the internet, it already includes the, the driver for a lot of printers already. Um, so printers, keyboards, you know, mice, and so on and so forth, they will get it to oper operate to a certain level, but to fully utilize some of the hardware, you need the, the specific driver from the manufacturer. I can give you an example. Um, go ahead, let me answer that question first. Oh, Roshi, thank you. Yeah, people on the wait list, you know, should remind me. <laughs> yep, go ahead. Um, you were saying that the, um, what if the, um, the fan isn't working and it gets really hot? Is that something that might cause that? Yes, that can cause a blue screen of death because, you know, if your fan or ventilation or cooling is not working efficiently, it can cause, you know, either the processor or the video chipset or some of the other components to actually fail. And when that fails, you know, um, sometimes you don't even see a blue screen of death. Your computer just you know, shuts down. And you see you know, it just quote unquote turns off itself. Um, other times you see the blue screen of death, you know, because you know, it, still, it can still get to that point to give you the blue screen of death. So seeing the blue screen of death can be due to many, many different reasons, you know, and it's sometimes it's really hard to diagnose, you know, why it is giving you that you know, blue screen of death. All right. So this picture is here. You know, I am switching back to the notes here. All right. So this is why you need to, you may need to install a new driver when you install any new peripheral components on your computer. Sometimes it doesn't, okay? Um, let's say you spend, you know, $70 on a gaming mouse, okay? You know, gaming mice, you know, are the ones with more buttons and has the vibration ability, so, you know, it's just a lot more interactive compared to a regular mouse. 
But when you just plug in a gaming mouse to a computer, it starts to work right away as a regular mouse. But what about all these other buttons you know, on the mouse? They don't do anything. Okay? That's because the generic, the generic driver of your mouse doesn't know how to you know, utilize the extra hardware on the gaming mouse. Now when you install the driver for that particular gaming mouse, the driver now understands, okay, now I know how to deal with you know, all the other buttons, and I know that you, you can even tell me to vibrate, you know, to shake, you know, you know, when it's time to do it. Okay? So that's why you need to install these drivers when you purchase a, you know, the new hardware. Yep. When you plug in your USB into your computer, this is uh, at the bottom right of the screen, search for your driver. Um, right. That's from Microsoft, not, it doesn't search hit the internet located in the bottom right. Um, I think you have the option. If you cannot find it on the hard drive, you know, where everything is installed, uh, I think Microsoft can pop the, I think Windows pops up a dialog box and asks you, do you want it to go online to see whether it can find an update for it? Yep. Can you have multiple drivers? Multiple drivers? You can have multiple drivers. No, and then if you could, wouldn't it be competing with each other, like you were saying, like the they apps, like. Okay, in the case where you have one single piece of hardware and there are multiple software drivers available for it, um, I don't know how Windows choose which one to use, um, but you can only install one at a time. Right. So if, you, if, if, you, if the default one that is installed is not working and you want to install something else, you will actually have to go into Windows, well, go what to... What if it is working and you still want to install, you still do the go into Windows? Say again? Like how you said, what if it wasn't working and you want to install another? Okay. What if it is working and you still want to install another? You still have to uninstall whatever okay, is already install. installed okay. and then install a new one. And a lot of times you have to tell Windows which one mm -hmm. to use because I think with some of the ones that are pre-installed, it will it doesn't know you know do you want to use this one that you just installed or do you want to use the one that comes with Windows. Yeah, so when, when there are multiple you know, software drivers for the same hardware, um, a lot of times you really have to go you know, do some of the tweaking yourself to make sure it's using the correct one. So let's talk about compatibility. Because different operating systems have different ways of, for application <coughs> programs to request surfaces and different interfaces to handle drivers, um, they are generally speaking not compatible. Okay. So we are not really just talking about, you know, oh, Windows and Linux are not compatible. We are talking about Windows within Windows, different versions of Windows can still be incompatible in certain ways. Um, especially when it comes to software drivers, uh, a lot of times, you know, even close versions, you know, versions that are really kind of close together are not um, compatible. Is there a question I can answer back there? No? Okay, well, if it's not on topic, you know, you might want to talk about it outside of the classroom, maybe after the class. Okay. So, in this case, you know, we are talking about, you know, Windows XP versus, you know, Windows 7, okay? They're, what, two versions, you know, different? Uh, diff there, there's a, there are two generations uh, in between. Um, do you think your XP driver, you know, for whatever hardware you have got will work in Windows 7? Nope. Does not work at all. Yep. Unless you have like the uh, higher versions of Windows 7, like Professional or Ultimate. Oh. Okay. In that case, they have a virtual machine. They they, they actually use a virtual machine technology to make the old driver work, which means they they're working in a very inefficient way. Right. Uh, but natively, it does not. You know, natively, it does not work. So that's why when you go, you know, uh, download a new driver for whatever hardware you purchase or have purchased in the past. Um, most manufacturers will actually let you select your operating system. Okay, a 32-bit operating system is different from a 64-bit operating system. Windows 7 is different from Windows Vista, and Vista is different from XP. Okay, so all so even within Windows, we're just talking about Microsoft Windows here. Even these operating systems are not fully compatible with each other. Now, this is on the driver side. On the application side, they are mostly compatible. Okay, if you have an application program that was running in Windows XP, you can probably install that in Windows you know, 7 or 8 and still have it to work. The other way around may not work. Okay. 
Most applications are written only for one operating system, and making applications available for different <coughs> operating systems can be a major task, but there's a big if here. If the software was not originally designed to be cross-platform, okay? Um, Microsoft Office is one of those, okay? Um, we have Microsoft Office on Windows, okay? That's usually the latest and greatest. After a little bit of time, they will release another one for the iOS, for, excuse, excuse me, for OS 10. But they never have one for Linux, right? But on the other hand, you can, you can also find programs that are available for all platforms. I'll give you just a few examples here. Um, I'll just start with this one, and then we'll continue the discussion later on. Uh, LibreOffice is, is an office suite. It's kind of like Microsoft Office in terms of what it can do, um, but it's open source, okay, which means you, know, you don't have to pay for it. Um, it's entirely free. But when you go to download, um, it, it understands you know, which platform I'm running right now, so it understands that I'm using Linux, and I'm running a 32-bit version of Linux, so it automatically picks it for me. But if you go click here, you can see that it, there are multiple versions that you can download. If you run Windows, you, know, you download the Windows one. If you use you know, Mac OS X, you can, uh, if you have a newer Mac, you use the Intel version. If you have a really old Mac, you can get a power PC version. If you use Linux, depending on which distribution you use, um, if you use the Debian or Ubuntu distribution and 32-bit, you download the x86. If you use a 64-bit version, you download the x86 64-bit. If you use Red Hat, Fedora, or anything derived from Fedora, you use the RPM you know, version. You know. So we can see that you know, LibreOffice is available for all practical platforms. Okay? And that's because this particular program or this particular application was written you know, with cross-platform compatibility in mind, and that's why they can maintain you know, compatibility across all the different platforms. But most proprietary software do not fall into this category. Okay, so I'm talking about Photoshop, I'm talking about you know, Microsoft Office, um, I'm talking about most of the programs that you purchase are proprietary and they only run on either Windows or OS X, you know, not even both in some cases. But open source software, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, they are available for all platforms. Um, we are running out of time today, so what I'll do is I'm going to tell you what you should be reading. We are almost done with operating systems, so I want you guys to read ahead of me before Thursday, and talk, we'll, we'll talk about productivity software, as well as cloud applications on Thursday. Yes? Most phones come with either 256 megabytes of RAM or 5 plus uh, X of RAM. That so enough? Yeah, 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 yeah. It depends on how many apps are active at the same time. So if you're driving, you have GPS, and you want to you know, talk on the phone at the same time, and then you have some other stuff in the background running at the same time, then you need more RAM. But if you use it 